All right, we're going to finish our review of logarithms with a, a couple of quick examples. Um, first, we're going to look at some of the graphical properties, and then we're going to play around with some of the algebraic properties. Um, okay, so here's a function. f of x is the natural log of 3x minus 6. We want to figure out the domain. Um, so we come over here, and we notice that for, for the sort of basic natural log with just x as input, the domain is x has to be between 0 and infinity. Um, so that means the input has to be bigger than 0, right? So when we come over to something like this, uh, it's no longer the case that we just need x to be bigger than 0. We need 3x minus 6. The whole input has to be bigger than 0, right? That means that we need 3x to be bigger than 6. So that means we need x to be bigger than 2. Right? So we can leave our answer like that if you like x bigger than 2. That's your domain. Um, if you prefer, you can write that as the integral from, from 2 to infinity. Uh, so that means that if you were going to try to plot the function, okay. Well, the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a vertical asymptote now at 2, right? So there's a vertical asymptote where the domain begins. Okay, right? So essentially, we've, we've shifted it over, right? Um, one way to think about it is this is 3, if you factor out the 3, right? 3 times x minus 2. So if you think about it that way, what we've done is we've shifted to the right by two units, thinking in terms of transformations, we shifted to the right by two units, and then we've, uh, we've compressed horizontally by a factor of three, right? Um, and so all that's gonna do is that's gonna, is, is gonna kind of, rather than having it go like that, it's gonna be a little bit steeper, right? The general shape is still the same, okay? Uh, we can still work out if we want to know what the intercept is, we can say, well, we know that the intercept is going to happen when the input is equal to 1, right? We know that, we know that the natural log of 1 is always equal to 0. So if we set 3x minus 6 equal to 1, so 3x equal to 7. So at x equal to 7 over 3, right, which is what? Just 2 and a third. So it's, it's around there, right? So you can see it's, it's compressed by a factor of 3, right? Rather than the intercept being one unit over from the asymptote, it's only one, a distance of one third from the asymptote. And then we can, we can plot it in. So we're going to have something that looks like that. OK, there's our graph. Notice that it's the same general shape, right? It's just a transformation of the original. OK. Now, here's, a, uh, here's an algebraic problem. This is working with the properties. Uh, we're given three values for the natural log. Log of a is 2. Log of b is minus 1. Log of c is 3. We want to find the value of this ugly looking expression here. OK. Now, one of the mistakes that people will make um, this becomes a complicated question if you if you think that well the you know if you think that this is telling you that your first step should be to solve for a b and c you're going to have a terrible time with this problem and yes i could solve for them right a is going to be e to the 2 b is going to be e to the minus 1 i could i could do that but but the point is that i don't have to do that because i have these properties the point is these properties let me break things down um, one thing that you you want to watch out for, I put square brackets around, around the one in the denominator to make it clear that that power applies to the logarithm and not to the input. Um, this power rule here, log of a to the k, this applies when the exponent is inside the logarithm, not outside. Um, one of the, the problems is that we sometimes encounter ambiguous expressions like this. Now, in this case, the intent is that that power is inside the log. Usually that, that's sort of the assumption if it's, if it's not clear. Um, 
If you're ever unsure, you could always ask, right? It'd be like, hey, this is ambiguous. Can you clarify? Um, okay. So with something like that, we can, on the top, we can use the exponent rule, right? And we can write this. We can write the top as 3 times the log of a cubed b to the 5 over, over c to the 4. Um, the other thing we could have done is we could have applied the, we could have used laws of exponents on the inside, right? a to the 9, b to the 15, c to the 4. Um, it's going to work out the same in the end, whichever way we do it, but that's fine. Um, and on the bottom, there's actually not much you can do, right? You just leave it as is. Um, one of the things to be careful about here is there's going to be a temptation to bring that power down in front. But because that power is outside the natural log, it's outside the function, there's nothing you can do about it other than work out the value on the inside and then square. Okay, um, now, what do you do from here? Well, with something like, I'm going to work over here because we don't have that much room. With something like log a cubed b to the 5 over c to the 4, um, we could apply the, the quotient rule and say, well, that's like the natural log of a cubed b to the 5. Subtract the natural log of c to the 4, right? And then you could apply the sum rule to that first term, right? And you could write it as log of a cubed plus the log of b to the 5 minus the log of c to the 4. Uh, once you get the hang of this, you'll realize that it's, it's always going to be the case that, that terms in the numerator just come with plus signs. Terms in the denominator come with minus sign, right, when you have things factored like this. And then finally, you can bring the powers down, right? So what you're going to have is, you still have that 3 out front, you're going to have 3 log a plus 5 log b minus 4 log c, okay? On the bottom, you can use that same reasoning to say, well, I've got uh, 2 log a plus log b minus 2 log c, and that whole thing is still squared, okay? And from here, you can put your numbers in. Um, I'm running out of boards, so maybe I, well, I can put it just above. So what do we get? We get 3 times uh, 3 times log a, so 3 times 2, 6, 5 times log b, so 5 times minus 1, 6 minus 5, minus 4 times 3, minus 12, and on the bottom, 2 log a, so 2 times 2, 4, okay, minus 1, minus 2 times 3, so 4 minus 1, minus 6, and I want that squared, okay? All right, so minus 33 over, what's that going to be on the bottom? Uh, over 9, which I suppose you can simplify to minus 11 over 3, right? But the point is to use the properties of logarithms, break everything down, then put in your numbers, right? It's primarily an exercise in making sure you know these properties, making sure, so the other pitfall here, when you have a log divided by a log, there's going to be the temptation to try and apply this rule and subtract the two. But that only works if the division is inside the logarithm, not outside, right? Um, all these rules apply when the operation, right, the multiplication, division, or the power is inside the log, and then you can split it up into something similar, on, simpler on the other side.